Okay, so why don't we get started? Like, it's a pleasure today, like, you know, to have uh, Mariam as one of our speakers. Like, you know, again, I think Mariam is well known to many of you because of her, uh, like, you know, her work mostly, I guess, on complex optimization, control, uh, now machine learning and algorithms. Uh, so Mariam is a, is a professor in, in the University of Washington in the E department, but she also has joint affiliations with math, computer science, and statistics. That's right. uh, <laughs> and let me just make this brief, like, you know, kind of please. Uh, oh, let's thank welcome you. Mariam. Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for the introduction, and it's a real pleasure to be here to see uh, such great interest in, in this uh, topic of uh, machine learning and uh, control theory intersection. So I'll talk about gradient-based methods for uh, control and learning of dynamical systems. It is a joint work. This, I'll mention a few different works, uh, but mainly joint work with uh, Ron Gay, who's at Duke University, and my colleagues at the University of Washington, Sham Kakade, Mehran Meswahi, and the uh, student, Jing Jing Bu, who works with Mehran and me. Um, okay, so uh, general motivation for looking at gradient-based design of controller, or the, looking at uh, control of dynamical systems, but trying to do, uh, analyze gradient-based algorithms is because these kind of gradient-based algorithms are used very commonly in practice. They are generally very popular and seem to work well in very complicated situations, uh, including uh, things like game playing, uh, all the way from AlphaGo to Atari, and uh, as well as robotics, manipulation, and uh, ta various robotics tasks. Um, but often these approaches lack uh, statistical and computational guarantees, uh, even when the dynamics is very simple, like linear dynamical systems. So in this talk, we will uh, try to look at, uh, what do I mean by gradient descent, by the way, is uh, we would like to do an update on the policy in order to improve some kind of a cost for the controller. So the control policy needs to get updated, and the control policy update uses gradient descent. So in this talk, we will be looking at uh, studying uh, direct policy updates uh, for the linear quadratic regulator problem. This is basically the simplest control problem, well studied in control theory, but we're gonna take a different approach to it. Uh, so we will be looking at updating the uh, gradient or, or updating the policy by taking it's the gradient of a cost function of this policy. So what is linear quadratic control? This is a very brief uh, review of a topic that is very uh, common and well understood in control theory. So uh, uh, the dynamics of the system is linear, and the cost uh, will be quadratic cost function of uh, the state and the input. So here's the, here's the dynamics. Uh, state xt denotes the dynamics at uh, the state at uh, time t. xt plus 1 is axt plus but. This is a discrete time uh, linear uh, dynamical system. We are going, uh, going to be interested for now in discrete time, but continuous time systems can also be handled. And we will be looking at an infinite horizon control problem, meaning that we would like to choose a sequence of inputs, u0, u1, all the way to uh, all, all times, in order to minimize a total quadratic cost function, which is the summation of xt transpose uh, qxt plus ut transpose r ut, where the matrices uh, r and uh, q are cost matrices that are given to us. So this is a quadratic uh, cost of state and input, and uh, we would like to minimize it. So we would like to, for example, make the state be small or track a desired state. That can all be captured in this. And we would like the control effort to be small, for example, measured in some weighted L2 norm, and that can be captured with the R. Um, so this problem is well studied and uh, in the traditional sense. If you know the A matrix and the B matrix which determine the dynamics of the system, the solution is given by, um, is known to be given by solving a Riccati equation. Uh, discrete Riccati equation, algebraic Riccati equation, uh, which uh, looks like this. So you actually need to solve for an auxiliary variable matrix P that satisfies this equation. The equation is a nonlinear equation. So as you see, for example, it's uh, P on this side, there's P on this side appearing uh, here inside the inverse. So it's a nonlinear equation, but it can be solved. There are linear algebra methods to solve it uh, both directly and iteratively. And once this problem is solved, once you find the P that solves this, then you can find the optimal control by simply plugging in uh, in this formula. 
So in this problem, the optimal control input is actually a static state feedback, meaning that there exists a matrix, fixed matrix K, that at every point in time, your state needs to just be multiplied by this K matrix. So K star will be the optimal controller that actually minimizes this LQR cost among all possible controllers. And it has a closed form formula that is given like this in terms of the P that solves the Riccati equation. However, so, so this is the classical theory. Uh, and it's a, a cornerstone of, uh, of model-based control essentially since the 60s, going back to Kalman, and there's a lot of literature on it. Uh, there's a recent resurgence and interest in uh, studying this problem from different points of view, uh, mainly mo motivated by robotics application, which are interested in the policy updates, as I was uh, mentioning. Um, and the classical version, which goes through building this P matrix, is, uh, has an extensive theory, and it has computational guarantees. So for example, to solve the Riccati equation, there are various methods, and they have uh, computational iteration guarantees. This goes back to work in uh, 60s and 70s. Uh, but one issue for us is that these methods would uh, need to solve for the matrix P first, and then, uh, then after that, you can obtain the K star. So uh, our goal is actually revisit this classical problem, but look at it differently. So we would like to consider methods that would update the policy, meaning the K. K captures the, the control policy as a function of state, right? So this gain K, uh, we would like to update it by, uh, we would like to look at algorithms that update this K directly by uh, using a cost function, C of K, um, that, uh, who's, uh, who, for, to which we have access in different ways. For example, we can have an, a gradient oracle, so we can have the gradient be evaluated, or we have a function value evaluator. We have a zeroth order oracle. So either of these, um, and then the question is, so we start with by looking at gradient. Actually, main focus of the talk is, is uh, when gradient is available. So the first question is, if I do gradient descent on the cost induced by the LQR problem, uh, does it converge? Does it converge to the well-known optimal controller K star? And then the second question is, what if gradients are not available? Can anything be said if we uh, sample the function value? Sorry. Um, okay, so this, why is this problem challenging? So the main challenge is that actually the cost as a function of K, so cost as a function of policy is actually not convex. And uh, therefore, doing gradient descent directly on a non-convex function can be horrible, and it generally does not have guarantees. Um, oh, sorry, this doesn't go forward. Let me. Uh, can I ask for help? It's not moving forward. Or just even here. Um, oh, sorry about that. Maybe I, in the meantime, I will, uh, I will continue. So the challenge is that the cost as a function of k is not a convex function, and we are going to actually look at what that cost looks like, the, basically the uh, landscape of the cost function, uh, optimization landscape, if I wanted to minimize ck as a function of k. Um, so while it is not convex, it has actually a lot of nice properties. Um, one of the, the main properties is that we can show uh, that the function is actually gradient dominated, uh, which is an inequality that says that the change in the function value is controlled by the norm of the gradient, and this is a very nice property. Um, the one challenge about this function is that uh, if, you, if you know control theory, you know that the set of controllers that stabilize a linear dynamical system itself is a non-convex set, and it's a very complicated set. Uh, but this function, if we define it correctly, is going to actually be something that is, uh, um, um, that, that will actually have its domain be uh, the set of stabilizing controllers, and it has a coercive property, meaning the function value actually blows up to infinity as you approach the boundary. And in this way, if you are actually starting from a particular K star, the sub-level set of the function uh, sub-level set meaning k such that uh, the set of uh, ck less than the value ck0. Uh, that set is actually a compact set. So we can use these properties to actually, uh, even though the function is not everywhere smooth, uh, thank you, we can use that, those properties to be able to uh, guarantee uh, 
uh, to show the gradient domination. So that's a, that's a nice property that the function has. So actually, before we look at the function, very quickly, I'll, I'll go a little bit fast. Uh, there's a large literature, of course, on connecting le uh, learning and control. They are, uh, there's a variety of different lines of work. A lot of them are about uh, controlling a system while learning it. A lot of them are about learning a model first and then using it to, to design the controller in the traditional way. Perhaps among this list, one of the closest to us is actually the last one. And the last is a paper that is, uh, that's trying to design uh, structured controllers. So controllers where you want to have constraints on the K matrix, for example, sparsity pattern. Certain K IJs in that K matrix need to be zero. And that's a known hard problem. They are solving this problem by taking gradient descent on the controller K. And it works very well in practice, but it doesn't really have any theory about optimality or about even rates of convergence. So uh, uh, we will talk a little bit about the use of this gradient-based methods for structured control design as well. But let me move a bit quicker. So why is this interesting? Because uh, the gradient descent directly on K, first of all, allows us to impose additional constraints on K. For example, the structure constraints, as I was saying, structural, uh, structured uh, controller design problem arises, for example, if you have a network system and you would like the controller to uh, have a restriction about which uh, actuators can have access to what information and things like that. Uh, so for distributed control, for example. And that the formulation is a natural one to view the cost as a function of K. And also that this way of looking at things helps us to understand the sample-based uh, approach or derivative-free approach to try to solve the problem. So here's the problem. We will be looking at the LQR uh, problem, but we will be, uh, actually one thing we will change is that let's consider the initial state, x0, to be random, chosen from some distribution d, and we assume for simplicity that the dynamics are noiseless, although that's not a big assumption. Then we look at what the cost function c of k is as a function of k. Uh, for that, we define two matrices, sigma k, it's the state covariance matrix for infinite horizon, and sigma zero is the covariance matrix of the initial state. Um, so now, suppose that the algorithms that we will be looking at uh, have, are of this kind. They have access to uh, uh, either one of these different oracles. So perhaps A and B matrices are not known explicitly, but we have some way of getting the gradients of the cost function as a function of k. So getting the exact gradient often does need to know a and b, but uh, suppose the, the, all, all that we need is a gradient oracle. So if you get a gradient oracle, then we will be updating the policy like that with a fixed step size move in the direction of negative gradient. Another algorithm that is popular is the natural gradient descent, and this algorithm uh, takes a weighted uh, version of the, of the gradient, weighted by the inverse of the uh, covariance of the states, and it's essentially like gradient descent in a different, in a Riemannian manifold or different uh, weighted geometry. Uh, or you can have a zeroth order oracle that gives you function values of C of K sampled at different KIs. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the C of K is a non convex function of K, and that's the main difficulty. We can even explicitly, explicitly write it out, it's a big mess, it looks like this. So uh, by the way, here I'm taking expected value of the LQR cost over the random initial state. Um, because we started with random initial state, and I'll have actually a comment about why we picked random initial state uh, shortly. <clears throat> and in that, uh, in that case, the uh, objective would look like this. The cost function would look something like this. So the key thing is that when you write it as a function of k, k appears here and here, and this is a Kronecker product, and it's all inside an inverse, and then k appears quadratically here, very messy. Uh, it's easy to see this is not convex. In fact, if uh, um, uh, uh, the size of the state is anything uh, equal to or bigger than three, we can easily construct a counterexample. You can think of the counterexample being, for example, that I have a controller that stabilizes the system and another controller, so K1, and a con another controller K2 that stabilizes the system. But if you take a convex combination of these, the controller may not be even stabilizing. So that means that the cost can blow up in a... Uh, convex combination. So that is a counterexample to the convexity. It's also not quasi-convex or star-convex. It doesn't have any of the nice uh, convexity properties. However, we can actually write down what the stationary points of this function are, or the optimization problem, which is when the gradient of the function equals to zero, what can happen? So it's actually interesting that once we study the function, we can show 
at the points that the gradient are zero, either k is optimal or that this controller k corresponds to a rank deficient state covariance matrix. So uh, if I want to guarantee optimality, I just have to rule out the second possibility. And that's actually pretty easy to rule out, uh, especially if we just start with a, a random initial state that has a full rank covariance matrix. So if sigma zero is full rank, then of course all the, all the future CKs just add to that full rank matrix will remain full rank. And so we will never be in the second situation and K will be optimal. So in a way, just uh, ensuring full rankness of the covariance of initial state is enough. We can also try to look at this problem in a slightly different way by looking at a convex LMI formulation uh, just to take the set of stabilizing controllers, write it in a convex way, and then try to argue the same thing. Uh, you can do that as well, but the proof is actually no simpler. The direct proof is, is uh, much shorter. Um, however, that LMI formulation could be useful for other, other purposes. I'll mention something in the end. So uh, what if the initial state isn't random? Well, we picked it random for a, for a reason, because if you look at the quadratic cost as a function of state, uh, this actually depends on x naught. And if k is stabilizing, then of course uh, ck is always bounded. But if k is not stabilizing, then whether ck blows up or not depends on uh, what initial state you took. So because we are interested in an in a initial state independent version of the problem, we can do the following. We can either take x naught to be random like we did, or we can, for example, say that we define the cost to be the average of a cost evaluated from a bunch of different x naughts that are linearly independent and span the space. So that also does the job. So making the cost independent of initial condition uh, in, in either of these ways works. And that in, the, in this case, if you define it this way, you can also have all the same properties that we have. In particular, the function is coercive. We can show that it has compact sub-level sets, as I was pointing out. And that uh, further, we can show that it's gradient dominated. So let's actually go back to the uh, random setting and uh, uh, the random initial condition. Here's the main theorem. We can show that the uh, uh, gradient descent on the cost with exact gradients converges, and we can give a concrete rate of con convergence in terms of problem parameters. So for the natural policy gradient descent, that is the one that had a normalization um, uh, with the state covariance matrix. Uh, the number of iterations, so to get epsilon close to the optimal controller, so uh, after n iteration, we get epsilon close to the optimal controller, where n has to be uh, this big. So we see that the dependence on epsilon here uh, is uh, log 1 over epsilon, which is the, the best. It's a linear rate. And the dependence on initial distance to optimality, very natural. The coefficients that appear in the front, this first one has a sort of a meaning of a condition number. It's the maximum singular value of the optimal state covariance matrix divided by the minimum singular value of the initial uh, covariance. Um, and uh, these other parameters have to do with the, with the matrices uh, A, B, R, and our choice of K0, the initial, initial uh, uh, controller. And the only condition we need for this theorem is that the initial K uh, or K0 that we pick is a stabilizing controller. For gradient descent, a similar rate also holds, uh, still uh, also a linear rate, log one over epsilon. Uh, the dependence on parameters is a bigger term, a little bit messier, but it's all polynomial in terms of all the uh, problem parameters. So good, okay, even though the problem is non-convex, we have a rate of convergence guarantee. One use of this framework is actually if you want to do structured controller design, which is by itself a, a very hard problem and historically, uh, difficult problem that has been studied a lot. So in this problem, typically you have the same problem that you want to find optimal k, but subject to constraints that certain k ij's are zero if the edge ij is not uh, allowed. Um, so if you have a distributed controller, uh, if you want to design a distributed controller, and that there is a lot of work in this topic, but some of the recent work are, uh, are mentioned here. There is a condition called quadratic invariance under which this problem allows a convex formulation, but in general, it's a hard problem. And as I mentioned, the work of Martinson and Ranzer actually uses gradient descent on the policy to empirically solve this problem and gets very good performance, but uh, no theory. So for this problem, uh, in general, we can actually show a uh, rate of convergence of uh, one, over, one over k, but only to a stationary point. In general, it's a hard problem. Um, however, under quadratic, quadratic invariance, we can uh, 
uh, we, are, we are working on it now, we are finishing it up, that we can show that there is a global convergence to the uh, optimal controller. Um, so, but, but there are still uh, more interesting cases of, special cases of structured controller uh, to be uh, studied. So the goal is to, if you update the controller, given that empirically it works well in practice, can we, can we show anything about it in, in theory? Now then, uh, I, I'll just mention uh, very briefly about the case that suppose your A and B matrices are not known, so you don't know the model, and you have only an approximate oracle for the gradient. So you cannot have an exact gradient of the cost with respect to the uh, controller, but you have an uh, estimate of it. Uh, well, how would this work? Then your algorithms would look like this. You have an estimate of the, uh, of the gradient appears here in gradient descent. In, for example, national policy gradient, you would have to also estimate the state covariance matrix. But so suppose this would be useful for cases where we have other ways of evaluating the approximate uh, gradients and um, trajectory covariances. Um, so what happens in this case? In this case, we can, uh, we can do the following. We can uh, try to obtain, for example, uh, so it's also useful if we can actually obtain samples of the cost function. Instead of even a noisy approximation of gradient, we are only restricted to getting uh, values of the cost function evaluated at certain KIs. This will be similar to derivative-free or zeroth order optimization. Uh, so uh, if we actually try to use that kind of approach, saying that we have a way of evaluating C of K at a particular K, uh, how do I use that? Um, I can take my current controller and perturb it by noise and uh, generate a few random uh, Ks around that point, evaluate the C at those and use, use those to proceed. But then, if I want to do that, how much noise do I need to add? Uh, what is the length of rollouts I need to do? So in, in this approach, you would actually try to run your system, either using a simulator or the physical system, for a limited period of time to obtain uh, sample trajectories and then use that to estimate, for example, sigma k and ck. So the question would be, what can we guarantee? So this would, be, this would lead us to an algorithm, for example, of this kind that is a very, very simple sort of derivative-free algorithm that only works based on function values is extremely simple. This is for, in order to give a first cut type of theoretical result, this uh, is the simplest algorithm you can imagine. So in this algorithm, we would have, uh, uh, suppose you start at some k0, and uh, you will be uh, at that particular k0, you perturb the uh, controller by adding a noise to it where this noise comes, for example, uniformly from a, from a sphere or from a ball. And uh, then you obtain estimates of the cost function. So you, then you run this controller uh, for a certain length of time, uh, starting from the initial condition from uh, x0, and then obtain the uh, samples of the cost function along the trajectory as well as the, uh, the trajectory itself. So based on that very simple, very limited observation, you get an estimate of the cost and an estimate of the covariance. And then you can try to estimate the kind of approximate the gradient in this very simple way and the covariance in this very simple, simple way. So these are, again, really simple estimates. They have very high variance. That's, that's true. But no result exists for this problem. So you want to at least see, does this work? Um, so yeah, we can actually give a global convergence rate in this case as well. So the theorem would look something like this. The details aren't shown, but <clears throat> just again, we assume that K0 is such that the initial, uh, the initial K0 is uh, stabilizing, so the initial CK0 is bounded. It's a finite value. Uh, we do need that assumption if there are ways to uh, estimate a stabilizing controller. That might actually be an issue if you don't know the model, but suppose you can. Uh, then uh, if the step size, a fixed step size is chosen appropriately small enough, uh, then, in the number of iterations and number of rollouts and length of rollouts that are all polynomial in uh, log 1 over epsilon and in all the other uh, problem-dependent parameters, we do converge to the optimal uh, uh, controller K star. We get epsilon close to optimal controller K star. The number of samples we need for this to work is, is polynomial in 1 over epsilon, so not optimal, but still, one can, one can characterize it. And it has polynomial dependence. It also is polynomially depending on the distance to the, uh, from the initial 
to optimality, and again, everything else, all the other problem parameters. So it's nice to have a way to combine uh, results from zeroth order optimization with this particular problem and be able to say that if you do gradient descent, even, even if your gradients are extremely noisy by function evaluation, uh, it still does, does converge to the uh, uh, optimal controller. Um, again, it doesn't mean this is the best way to do it. Maybe for a linear system, it's much better to learn a model first and then do control. But if you are going down this, this approach of I want to do the pure model free, at least this gives you some way of understanding what's going on with these methods. Um, and that the convergence to global uh, optimal controller in the linear case is by itself interesting. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so we studied uh, gradient descent and its variance uh, for the LQR problem. Um, the updates are directly on the policy. The cost function over the set of stabilizing controllers has nice properties, including coerciveness despite uh, non-convexity. I didn't go into the details, but we have actually a paper that will be soon in the archive that works out uh, these details. So thank you very much, uh, and I'll take any questions. Uh, we have time for a few questions, so. Okay, so um, in the case of structure control design, you mentioned a QI property, and then I think in that case, the optimal control is, is a dynamic one, so in your uh, current presentation, the case is static, so how do you deal with these uh, dynamic controller? Uh, yes, it's not the traditional uh, quadratic invariance. Uh, in fact, it's true, the quadratic invariant, if you want to say uh, the, the optimal controller over the set of all controllers is a dynamic controller. In our problem formulation, we are only looking at static controllers. So it's not exactly the quadratic invariance condition. Something similar to that. Uh, have you by any chance considered cases <coughs> when you have state or uh, control uh, constraints? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, a case with the uh, state or control constraints in addition to that. Uh, ah, I see, I see. Um, uh, no, we have not actually. That's a, that's a good question. The control is itself pen penalized in the objective, so at least there's a quadratic penalty on the control. Um, but if you wanted to penalize it in other ways, uh, then it's slightly different formulation, so we didn't look at that. It's a good question. Um, just you mentioned in your future work, uh, extending to other costs. Um, maybe could you speak to what other types of costs do you think you could analyze? Um, there are many different uh, control problems uh, with different costs. So for example, H infinity control, which is a very different cost function, and it's for use for robustness. You want to protect against the worst case adversarial noise. That's very interesting, but it's of course a much harder problem because it's not even differentiable, non-smooth problem, et cetera. So, we have some partial results along that direction. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So work will be forthcoming. So thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, so in the beginning of the talk, you talked about the similarities of the continuous time discrete time systems and that using your method, you can actually handle continuous time systems. I don't think that's that easy for the continuous time systems because um, it's uh, the Hamiltonians, they depend on the dynamics, although mm -hmm. in the discrete time systems, you don't have this. So how do you handle this one? Yeah, so our work is for discrete time system. We're actually more interested in discrete time. Uh, but for continuous time, you're right. The problem is actually different, but you can look at gradient flows, and gradient flows actually behave nicely. So some things are more complicated about the continuous time, but some things are actually simpler. The, the Lyapunov equation, for example, is simpler. The Riccati is simpler, et cetera. So there are some nice properties. You can still show that the cost as a function of controller has nice properties. But yeah, there's differences. Great, thank you for a very nice talk. Thank you.